Hello everybody, today I'd like to share with you this GE M250 R1. Now I recently picked this up, well, not so recently anymore, over the summer, many months back here, with a whole bunch of other really cool lighting stuff. You may remember I did a video a while back of a GE M250A, which I did on the tree outside. Well, it's winter here in Wisconsin and very cold and very snowy, so it's not really a good idea to be presenting this particular fixture to you outside right now. So that's why we're doing it inside. But anyway, the reason I was referencing the other GE M250A is because I picked that up, and I have, I believe, three of those and two more possibly coming uh, of the GE M250A. This also came from that same haul of all the things that I got. There's just so much to go through. I really will try my best to do a video of everything that I got. But anyway, this is one of those things. Now, when I originally got this, it did not have a refractor on it. This is a refractor off of one of the M250As. And I don't know if it's really appropriate for the fixture because uh, it's made for the slant of the um, pyramid-looking shape when you put the M250A on its back. You know, it has the power door and then the door for the lens. So it's not really the correct lens to be on this particular fixture, but it works. I will be getting more lenses as well in the future here to hopefully replace the ones that I keep borrowing from. Anyway, as you can see, this particular fixture was originally 150 watt high pressure sodium, but it isn't that anymore. This one I converted to something quite interesting, and the reason I did it is because I'd really like to keep this fixture as a collective novelty type fixture. Something that can be put in a, you know, living room or something like that in my house in the future. Anyway. Um, well, here is the bottom of the fixture, because obviously this would be facing the roadway. We do have a GE logo here on the lens. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. Of course, the GE logo here as well. Now, the reason I decided to use this GE M250 uh, R1 as my unique novelty fixture is because it's a little slimmer than um, the A uh, version. So that's nice, it takes up less space when moving it and things like that. But anyway, we'll open this up and you can see what I have hidden inside. I'll take the door off because all it does is just hinge off the bottom here like you saw. And let me set that aside. We'll take a look at that again here in a moment. Anyway, inside the fixture, you'll notice a small bulb. You can kind of see the arc tube inside. Yes, this is high pressure sodium. And this gear, and this bulb, and well, everything here, even the cord, all of this, except for the new um, stripping that I put in here because the gasket was missing, um, I got from the same uh, haul that I got all these things from. So yeah, really cool. Anyway, this is a bulb that I decided to use in it, which came with the low, pre or not low pressure sodium, but high pressure sodium ballast here. This Sylvania Frosted, or Deluxe as they like to call it. 35 watt high pressure sodium bulb. I did install a Mogult medium adapter, as you can see there. Now I also had to uh, install or replace the original GE socket with a different one because it did not like the reducer that I put inside of it. This socket likes it a lot better. Again, something I got over the summer as well. So let's take a look at the back since we're working our way kind of this way. We can see all the paint is pretty much sun bleached away, and we do not have a photocell, just like all of the M250As that I have as well. None of them have photocells, and I think the place that I got these from did not use that because everything was on a relay, so they could turn them on and off in a big group instead of individually by themselves like this. So yeah, in pretty good condition. All this um, rough stuff here is from production, so not a problem. But we have a very clean reflector. Of course, like I said, I replaced the, um, the stripping here with some new weather stripping, and that works perfectly fine. We can see the igniter, which I had to replace uh, from this one that originally came with the uh, 35 watt high pressure sodium ballast. This came from a 150 watt high pressure sodium ballast, but they work from the range of 35 to 150. So not a problem there. Again, something I picked up um, 
we can see the original terminal block down in here, which I'm not using. I just kept it in there somewhere as a um, piece of the fixture because it is original to it. Now, we can see these two braces here, and you can see underneath, inside, there's different risers down there I'm pointing, and the ballast would sit in here, you know, like this, and then this would basically just clamp it in place, and that's how the fixture was when I originally picked it up. Now, the it, the fixture was 240 volt, so the ballast was not multi-tap, so I just took it out and recycled it. But anyway, in its place is the new 35 watt Advance um, high pressure sodium ballast, which I just used the mounting holes that were on these braces to just uh, mount it in place because there is a brace welded to the ballast and that works perfectly fine because it's not going to fit within the gap down here, it's way too small. And I just zip tied the power cord here which came off of an old uh, refrigerator, works perfectly. And all the wires here as well, try to keep them together. But it's pretty simple, we do have the, um, I don't know if you call it a bird guard or, it's a guard. It's probably put on wrong, but I just put it in there again, just so it stays with the fixture. This brace is um, bolted all the way down, you can't fit a um, arm in here currently, just so it doesn't rattle a lot. Because again, I want to use this more as a novelty um, item in a home than an actual, you know, usable fixture. That again is why such a low wattage high pressure sodium bulb. Now I could have went with mercury vapor or something like that, but I wanted to keep the fixture original to its roots and keep it high pressure sodium. Now you may have noticed that the sticker in this fixture that would have had the date code and everything like that is missing. And it was destroyed beyond belief, the paper uh, sticker when I got the fixture. I couldn't read anything on it. It was pretty bleached out and well now it's just a piece of history. So anyway let me move that over here and we'll take a look at the door. So here we have again the glass refractor. We have the latch that holds it in place. Again you can you know turn this out of the way and pop the refractor out and put a new one in if you so desire if it breaks or something. We do have this latch here to latch, you know, the door into place. And then you just clamp it down and the force and friction there holds it. See if we can get a look at, oh, it's not going to show up at all, but you can see there the GE logo. It's not really printed very well, but I think all it says is like street side. Again, the GE logo and the older designed sticker. Very bleached out, obviously. Kind of dirty inside still. I gave all these fixtures a very good washing because they were very, very dirty. And, um, yeah, a little bit of dirt there. It's not going to hurt anything. I'm just going to set this door down for a second so I can bring this back. Make sure I center it in camera so you can all see it. Let me bring back our door here. Of course, this just slides in down here and folds back up. Now the one problem is here that these, the pins at the end that sit in the, um, whatever, the hinge itself isn't made very well. They tend to break off. I've seen a lot of that happening. So you gotta be careful with that. So put this down, the clamp clamps on the bottom here. Make sure it's hooked. And obviously it'd work better if it was, you know, installed properly and this was facing down and not up. But it just clamps into place like that. Yes, there is a gap here. Fixtures like these had that, so that's just a typical thing. So, of course, let's get to the real star of the show and turn this thing on. So, here we go in three, two, one. Now, of course, it is a 35 watt high pressure sodium bulb, so it's not going to be too um, too bright. And I remember looking it up, uh, the lumens that it outputs. It's a little brighter than a 100 watt incandescent bulb, if I remember correctly, but it's dimmer than a 150 watt incandescent. Again, that's if I remember the uh, lumens that I looked up. So obviously, we'll let this thing warm up and um, we'll be back. We'll just uh, speed up the video, obviously. Uh, 
Okay, so we're basically at full brightness now. Now obviously a 35 watt high pressure sodium light doesn't take too long to warm up and it doesn't get too bright. As you can see, we can still see some of the sunlight from outside. It is setting, but uh, bouncing off of the uh, 15 indicator here, pretty cool. Now, um, let me go ahead and we'll open it up because why not? So there you can see inside. The camera makes it look insanely bright, but it's actually not too hard to look at because, again, the bulb is very, um, very dim, believe it or not. The diffused coating actually helps with the um, ease of the light. It's not so annoying to look at. It's actually quite pleasing. Now, I do enjoy high-pressure sodium. I mean, it is the light that I... the... the... Uh, type of discharge light that I grew up with at the end of our driveway for the city. But, um, you know, I know mercury vapor and things like that are way more desirable, but I do think high pressure sodium now with it being phased out so quickly with LED definitely deserves a place in, in collectability like this. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this video of my GE M250 R1. Also, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.